Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Well, today, as you guys can already see from the thumbnail, we've got a video that's actually going over a new OBD2 scanner. So uh, as you guys know, I like to do a lot of uh, modifications and diagnostics and things like that on the F10. I have a lot of people reach out to me because I'm working on with ISTA and, uh, and Beamer code and things of that nature. And a lot of people have a lot of issues trying to get downloads of, of ISTA. I don't know if it's even available now. I, when I got my download, it was usually, I wanna say it was about three or four years ago. I, I got it downloaded off of uh, BeamerFest. So um, I actually had a company reach out to me. This company is called Launch. Uh, they have a new code reader. It's actually the C Reader Elite 2.0. It's a BMW scanner. And, uh, and for those guys that d can't get a hold of ISTA or, or you're, you're, you're wanting to do diagnostics on your car and, and you don't have an OB2 scanner, this may be a really good option. So I told that, that company, go ahead and send it out. Uh, this is a sponsored video. So they did send the scanner out for me to review. Um, I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion of it. So let me turn around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the camera around, show you guys what we have. We'll do an unboxing and then we'll see what we gotta do to get this hooked up and see what kind of features it has. So we've got the new launch scanner just came in. I believe this came in from Amazon. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it opened up. And what I will do, of course, for any of you guys that are looking for a new scanner, I'm going to actually link this product in the video description. Uh, you will probably uh, be able to go directly to Amazon to pick this up if this is something that you're interested in. Uh, give me just one second. We're going to see if I can get this uh, camera on a tripod. Okay, guys, I'm going to try my best not to block the camera here. But we're going to go ahead and open up. There we go. So this is, this is what comes in the package. You've got an, a, a user manual as well. What is this one here? And this it looks like it's just um, actually just a quick start guide. So that's nice. Your package here. We kind of get this moved out. And this looks like a nice screen. Uh, it does have a little bit of um, plastic lens cover on there. So we'll get that pulled off. Uh, you've got your port on top and a power button. Uh, you also have uh, a USB. Uh, it's not a USB. It is a USB-C it looks like type connection there. So um, yeah, launch. Launch tech. So we'll get this plugged up, plugged in real quick. Uh, and I'm assuming that this is going to be a charging port. Um, hopefully it is charged already. If not, uh, it did not come with the cable for charging. So if it is not charged, I will have to take some, uh, some time here to make sure that we get it charged. But um, I will get this connected real quick and we'll get started. Of course, straightforward when it actually comes to connecting it. Uh, let's see if we give it any power. There it is. This one is powering up. So uh, looks like it is at least a little charged, enough juice for it to actually power on. We'll see if it has any battery indication on it or, at all. Um, while it's launching here, let's see if what we, uh, it does talk about our charging port, diagnostic connector. Okay, so yeah, this is just basically kind of a, a getting started, like just what it says, a quick start, kind of gives you a little quick rundown of what's going on. So I don't know if this is touch screen or not. It does seem to be touch screen. So, we're going to select English. I'm just going to walk through our steps here. Time zone. That's pretty interesting. I didn't, wouldn't imagine. Let's see here. Chicago. Uh, and then we can connect to, uh, this is uh, networks. Uh, actually, <laughs> MHD is actually showing up right now for my MHD dongle. So we're going to go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. And then I will have to go grab my Wi-Fi password. I'll be right back. Just like that, I am now connected to my Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go ahead and hit our next step. Uh, workshop information, we're going to skip that step. I'm not worried about workshop. Uh, there is a nice disclaimer. I know you guys at home probably read through all of your information and disclaimers. I typically do not. So we are just gonna hit okay and keep moving. Okay, so here we go. We've got OBD, OBD2 uh, diagnosed. So let's go ahead and get this thing connected. Uh, I don't believe I have any codes that are currently on the BMW right now but we will certainly find out, so just a moment. Okay, so we have our OB2 scanner set up. We're getting ready to get everything connected. I'm gonna go ahead and give the vehicle power, um, and then we will also see here, um, for those that are wondering, I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not, but um, yes, I do have a OBD2 port coming out of my secret little cubby hole here. So uh, basically, um, I actually installed an OBD2 splitter so that I could have my MHD connected uh, and I didn't want to have it actually down on the footwell where I kept kicking it. So I just actually drilled a hole in the back of this 
little cubby hole and put my splitter in there. So I have two connections that are actually coming out right here. So if that, uh, if that makes sense for you guys or not, I'm not 100% sure if I explained it right. But we're gonna reach in here, see if we can't plug this in. Not a lot of room though. Okay, so it is now connected. What we're seeing here is this, uh, looks like it's supposed to be doing an OBD2 scan. I mean, a VIN scan is what it shows right now. But uh, there we go. It automatically pulls the VIN of the vehicle. So uh, because it actually had power, so that's good. Uh, and now we're gonna go into notes here. See what this, to, again, this is the first time, uh, like I said, I'm doing this real time with you guys. This is the first time you're using this scanner. So we're just going to see where it takes us. Just like that, it's actually searching for fault codes or issues that we may have. And wow, it's actually doing a solid job here. Gives us a basic diagnosis, diagnosis, uh, diagnosis report. So this is pretty cool here. It tells me a uh, VIN model of the car here. I'm gonna change this camera around here a little bit, see if I can't bring you guys in a little bit closer. Okay, hopefully you guys are able to see this pretty well. Again, we've got uh, ignition power here and we're just gonna see what we have. Uh, this actually goes through the information, tells me the, the make, model, and year of my vehicle. Um, see professional report. Uh, this is actually really cool. Uh, I am having some issues with my tire pressure monitor, monitoring system, so uh, that's very good for me to kind of see here. Wheel detection not possible. It's an intermittent issue. Okay. So uh, yeah, I, I'm actually really digging this. Let's see here, every, every other, all the other systems look to be fine. ZGM Central Gateway, let's see what that's telling me. Uh, Central, I don't actually know, I've seen this code or this error before. I just usually delete it, but I don't know what it uh, is actually referring to. Telephone system, not really concerned. Uh, roof system, this has to do a little bit with my uh, sunroof. I, I did have an issue here for the sunroof. So uh, that's interesting there. Um, footwell. So a couple of things here are showing up. Um, and again, I have, I'm typically because I have the LED headlights, uh, this is a, a code that actually shows up as an internal fault on the, the driver uh, modules. Uh, that's because I no longer have the AFS system on the uh, LED headlights. Hopefully this is showing up okay on the camera, guys. Um, so that is something that I've seen in ISTA quite often. But this is really cool that you can see this on the scanner. So I really, uh, that's really cool to see this report. Um, then there's the diagnostics issue. So I, it looks like I could probably go here. I can clear codes. Um, I don't know if I can do any diagnos uh, run any diagnostics on it. Like, so let's hear, this is our, okay, this is for the, uh, okay, that's the central gateway. I didn't want that one. Let's go to the tire pressure sensor. So we're gonna click on that one. And wow, so it's giving me information regarding the production date. Okay, that's fine. Not really much there. Okay, read fault code, read data stream. Interesting. Accuation tests. Let's see here, status of RDC. So there's actually some, some cool things here you can do with this scanner. Um, I'm gonna be interested to actually do some playing around and see if I can't um, test some things here. So um, start, reset, and initialization. Hmm, okay. So yeah, um, pretty simple stuff, but I, I do like the, uh, the options that are sh I'm seeing here. So let's go back here. We're gonna end this diagnostic session here. Okay, so we've made it back to our fault screen here. What I can do is I could go through and of course clear codes if I decide I wanna do that. Um, report, let's click on report and see here. Sh I think I could share this report. Will this let me email it to myself, I wonder? It's loading here. Um, send to mailbox automatically. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, uh, receiver, da, 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 da. okay. Uh, looks like you would actually enter your email address is what I'm assuming here, but I could be wrong, but that's really interesting. So we're gonna go back to our, this here's our home screen. So we're gonna click home and uh, let's just go OBD2. So this is going to exit this diagnostic section. 
Uh, or maybe I have to exit it first. It would, yes, yes, we're gonna exit. Let's now go home, okay. OBD2, it's connecting to the serial port. Sorry guys, I'm kind of playing with this real time for you guys so you can kind of see what, I, what I'm learning as well too. Uh, but uh, this is actually gonna be really handy. I don't know if you guys realize that I, I, I've been using my ISTA on an old laptop and it's just, um, in a lot of ways, it's it's more of a hassle to have to break out. Uh, this could be something that could get a lot of use for, uh, on my side here, um, just for, you know, random checking codes or, or wanting to do system checks. Um, this would have been very helpful uh, when I was actually having issues with the Valvetronics. Um, however, I don't know if, if you can actually do like the relearn processes and things of that nature. That would be something that I would like to to be able to find out actually. Just wanted to show you guys one more thing before we uh, we get out of this video. I was actually just playing around here in the menu. I was able to go into um, the special functions. So I'm still in di diagnosis modes. I went to special functions. And when you do, there are actually a lot of things that pull up, a lot of features that you can actually use this launcher, um, this 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 um, scanner for that uh, that is makes this extremely helpful, right? So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't speed this up very quickly for us it does take a moment for it to uh, access the system. Okay, we're identifying all the different ECUs and should go ahead and switch over now. Okay, so I can actually go now into uh, Drive and as you see, there are multiple different options that pop up here. Uh, setting oil pressure, maximum oil pressure, determining injectors. Um, you can actually uh, check engine tuning, adjust wastegate linkage. I mean, all sorts of really cool D, uh, DME delete adaptations, uh, start walnut blasting. I mean, uh, I, what I, I think earlier I was talking about uh, Valtronics. So here's actually, uh, you can actually set your or determine the uh, Valtronic adaptation limits, the position limits. You can start Valtronics. So there's, there's a lot of functions. You get into some of your con, um, transmission functions as well too. Relearn, standstill adaptation, activation. So lots of really cool things here that you actually can use this scanner for. So I'm really excited to see that as well too. Uh, nothing that I need to get done here at the moment, but that is a, a really, really good feature to be able to see that there are a lot of different functions. And again, this is just in your drive options. There are additional options when you get into some of the other chassis would it probably be like your um, you know, windows, power tailgate, um, seats, uh, remote. Uh, so all, all sorts of, of really cool things in here. Um, I'm excited to see that. So there's a lot of different things that we can do here with this scanner. Okay, guys. Well, hopefully I've kept this video short and informative. I'm really excited to, uh, to use uh, this new uh, scanner. So, so again, thanks to Launch for reaching out, sending this uh, scanner out to me because I'm really excited about the features that it has. Um, I'm telling you guys personally, I'm more likely to probably grab this scanner for, for, for especially for a lot of the simple things that I've been using for OBD2 reading, as well as for any of the coding and things of that nature. I think this is going to be a lot easier than pulling out the 15 year old laptop that I have uh, and having to kind of fumble through it too. So um, if this is your first time to the channel, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. Again, I am going to put a link to this product in the video description so you guys can go out there and check it out for yourself. Um, if you guys have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out. Let me know in the comments what you got, any other videos that you guys want to see. Uh, but other than that, guys, everyone be safe and we'll catch you guys in the next video.